Hi guys, this is Andrew with rockclass101.com and in this week's ukulele lesson you're going to meet our new instructor Christopher who's going to be teaching you the vintage sounding tune Five Foot Two Eyes of Blue. So with this song we have it arranged more so as an etude in that it's split up into four sections and each section teaches you a different strumming technique. So we did this because this song is actually the capstone performance piece of our new strumming course, which is titled Strumming Techniques Beyond the Island Drum. So as the name implies, this is a course that is written for those of you who feel like you've plateaued in your rhythm playing. So if you've mastered the island strum and you've mastered chucking and you're kind of wondering where to go next, then I'd highly encourage you to check out this course. So the course breaks down all four techniques and it starts by teaching you how to execute the technique, but then it goes a step further and gives you exercises for each technique so that you really get them ingrained into your playing repertoire. So I can't state it enough, I highly encourage you to check out the course before you jump into this lesson because this lesson is gonna be taught with the assumption that you've gone through the course and that you understand all the techniques, not only how to play them, but also how they relate to a rhythm standpoint. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about this lesson. So in this video, you guys are gonna learn the entire etude, but if you wanna get the tabs to print off and follow along with, then you can click this link right here or go to the site rockclass101.com, do a search for five foot two eyes of blue. Now on that page will also be the on-screen tab viewer. This is a really cool feature where you can hit play, watch the tab scroll across in real time. You can highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down to any speed you wish. Just a really great asset in learning a song that's a little bit trickier, especially with the new strumming techniques that this one has. All right guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and hand it off to Chris to teach you how to play this tune, and then I'll see you at the end of the video. start this exercise by breaking down the A section of five foot two eyes of blue. Now this is the easiest part of the tune, but it's a great opportunity for us to really go over the melody as well as the chord voicings that are used throughout the vast majority of this tune. Let's jump right in. Starting off, we're going to be on an F major chord, two open, one open, just your standard open position one. And then for bar two, we're going to go to an A seventh chord, open, one, open, open. Now what's unique about this is that we're going to add a note on our A string on beat two of each measure to give us the moving melodic line. In the case of the F chord, we'll be putting down our third finger or fourth finger, doesn't matter, on the C on the third fret of our A string. Now this is just for beat two and then we'll immediately lift it up. Likewise on the A seventh bar, we'll be going up just a half step from that to a C sharp on the fourth fret of our A string. Again, this is only on the second beat. And then we're gonna lift it right back up. Now, rhythmically, these first two bars are identical. We're going to start beat one with our claw stroke, down strokes on two and three, and then just a swung eighth note down and up on beat four. But remember that on beat two, we are going to be adding our extra melody note. So the first two bars are going to sound a little bit something like this. Let's try that together. One, two, three, four. And moving on, we're going to our D seventh chord next. Two, open, two, open. Your standard Hawaiian D seventh chord, as many call it. And likewise, we're going to be adding in an extra melody note. In this case, it's going to be the fifth fret or a D on our A string. And this time it's going to be on beats two and four instead of just beat two. Now for these two bars, the D seventh, while they are identical, we're just going to strum through swung eighth notes or down up the entire time while just adding in that melody note. These D seventh bars will sound like this. Just one repeated pattern over and over. Let's try that together. One, 
One, two, three. Now, as we look down to the next line, we're getting our first unique chord voicing that you might not be familiar with. This is a G7 voicing, much as we play down here, but the melody is up here, so we need to move the whole voicing up so that we can access those notes. What we're going to do is play an open G string, and then we're going to bar our first finger across the fifth fret here on our top three strings. So it'll be open, and then we'll bar across our C, E, and A strings. Your second or third finger, it doesn't matter which, is going to play the B on the seventh fret of your E string. So this is really going to be our full chord, but we're going to start off with a finger on the eighth fret of our A string, on that F right there. And what we're going to do is go between this F and then the D on the fifth fret where our bar is. We'll just lift that up. So on beats one and three, we'll have this F on the eighth fret and then we'll be picking that up and playing the D under our first finger on the fifth fret for beats two and four. Now this rhythm's similar to the first two bars, but not quite the same. Instead of placing the down and up eighth notes on beat four, we're going to place it on beat three this time just to change it up. And again, we have a claw stroke on beat one. So we're starting, remember, with that F down on the eighth fret when we start this. We're gonna have a claw stroke and then we are going to lift up our finger, play straight through, put the 8th fret back down, and do an 8th note. And then we're going to lift up our 8th fret again, and just play a quarter note down strum on beat 4. So it's going to sound like this in bar 5. All right, and then we're moving on to our C7 chord. Again, this might not be a voicing you're familiar with, but if you've delved into bar chords a little bit. You've likely seen this before. We will bar on our third fret now and take our second finger and put it on the E on the fourth fret of our C string. And that's what we're going to strum for beats one and two. For beat four, we're going to put our ring finger or pinky on the fifth fret for the D, the fifth fret of our A string, just for a little movement. So this C seventh bar will sound like this. It's just going to be a claw stroke on beat one and then quarter notes. So. so let's try those two bars together. I'll play them for you first and then I'll count you in so we can do it together. Let's try that together. One, two, one, two, three, four. And then we're going to resolve this progression to our F major chord. No claw stroke here. We're going to go down, 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 up, down. So it's just, and no moving notes. It's just our standard F major chord with the open A string. And then we're going to go to our root position, C7, with just our first finger on the B flat on the first fret of our A string for two beats. And then we will go just to a regular C chord for one beat to add a little bit of movement in this, and then right back to our C7. So the last two bars are going to sound like this. And let's try that together. One, two, three, Now let's try the entire A section of the tune together. One, two, three, four. Hello everyone. 
Now let's work on part B of this exercise, which utilizes the triplet and fan strum that we learned earlier in the course. Now, if you're keen, you'll note that the first two bars of this are the identical rhythm that we used in our last fan strum exercise. It is two eighth note triplets and then one quarter note triplet. Triplet, 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 triplet. So as long as you're fine with that rhythm, this shouldn't be too hard for you. The chords are identical to the A section. So we're going to start off on our F major chord and again on beat two or our second triplet in this case, we will be putting down our third or fourth finger on the C on the third fret of our A string. So just our first two groupings of triplets, you'll do one eighth note triplet on the F chord as it is. And then we'll put down that extra note. And then we have a fan strum or a, qu or a quarter note triplet. And that's gonna be over open. So our first bar will sound like this. And then the same exact rhythm for our A seventh bar and the same thing, we're going to put down our C sharp on the fourth fret of our A string on beat two or the second triplet grouping. All right, so here is what the first two bars sound like. And let's try that together. One, two, three. Now for the next bar, we're going to move on to our D seventh. And again, we have the same movement up to our fifth fret to highlight the melody on beats two and four, much as we did in the A section of this tune. Now this next bar is going to be entirely eighth note triplets. So on the second and fourth groupings of eighth note triplets, we'll be adding in that D under our pinky. And then the second bar of the D7, it's just a little bit different, we'll be do two groupings of eighth note triplets, and then we'll go back to just our swung eighth notes. So the second bar will be. So let's try that D7 bar. It's gonna sound like this. Let's try that together. One, two, three, four. And then we're going to go up to that G seventh voicing, barring on the fifth fret that we used before. Same exact pattern that we played in the last uh, exercise. It's not going to be any different. We're just not going to have the claw stroke here. And then moving on, our C7 bar will be identical, just omitting the claw stroke. So those two bars with the G7 and C7 will sound like this. Let's try that together. One, two, three, four. And then in this case, instead of resolving to our root position F like this, we're going to use a bar chord F because we want our melody note up on the eighth fret of our A string. So we'll put our pinky there and then we'll bar the rest of the strings with our first finger across the fifth fret. We're going to do two down strums for the first two beats. And then our eighth notes here, we're gonna slide our pinky down to the seventh fret. And then we're going to slide that down on beat four to an E flat to give us an F seventh chord. So the F bar is going to sound like this. And then we're going to take this position that we end up with. You don't have to use your pinky, you can use your third finger. You can also walk down with individual fingers, whatever works. Um, but we're going to take this same position where we end up fifth fret with the uh, one finger on top on the sixth fret for a bar chord. And we're just going to slide that whole position down one fret to give us an E seventh chord, because we're about to go to an A seventh, that'll be our dominant. And we're going to play the same exact rhythm. It's just gonna be down, 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 up, down on the E seventh. So we're the last two bars of the B section. Let's try that together. One, two, three.
let's see if we can get the whole B section going with these triplets. Remember that when we count in this B section, as we talked about in the previous lesson, you want to subdivide or think about these triplets in your head so that you come in exactly on the beat with those three notes evenly divided across the beat. One, two, three. to the C section of this tune, which is the bridge. We're going to be utilizing the split stroke throughout this, so make sure that you're very, very comfortable with that right hand technique before you truly dive into this section of the tune, because we're going to use some funky chords in here, and there's a lot of things going on, so you don't want to start off on the wrong foot by not being comfortable with the right hand motion that we're using throughout. To begin, we're going to be on an A seventh chord. Now this chord is going to be your middle finger on the sixth fret of your G string, your ring finger on the seventh fret of your C string, your first finger on the fifth fret of your E string, and then your pinky up top on the seventh fret of your A string. Now note, this is really just your root position E seventh chord, moved on up, that's all it is. And much as we had movement in the beginning sections of this in the melody, we're going to do the same thing here. So we have this A seventh chord, on the end of two, you can really move it on beat two, as on beat two, we're only playing the G string. We're going to just slide our pinky up to the eighth fret here. And then as soon as beat two is over, just bring it right back down. So it's rhythmically almost identical to what we did in the beginning of the song, but we're gonna throw a split stroke over top of it. So our two A seventh bars are identical. We're going to slide up the pinky for the end of the second beat into the third, and then slide it right back down. So our A seventh bars will sound like this. Let's try that one together. One, two, three, four. Now we're going to move on down to a D7 chord at this point, which would be almost identical to our C that we played down here, but we're going to slide it up to the 5th fret, so it'll be a bar on the 5th fret, and then your 2nd finger on the 6th fret of your C string. And we're going to start off actually on a D9 chord. We're going to add this E up top on the 7th fret of the A string on beat 1, and then we're going to pick it up on beat 2, and then we're going to put it back down for 3 and 4. And then we're going to just go to our regular D7, and we're going to strum through this for the bar. It will be down, down, triplet, down. No melodic movement, just that rhythm. So our D7 bars sound like this. Let's try that one together. One, two, three. We're going to move on to a G7 chord at this point. This is going to be identical to your A7 chord, but we're going to move it down and the middle finger is now going to be on the 4th fret of our G string. The ring finger will be on the 5th fret of our C string. The 1st finger will be on the 3rd fret of our E string. And the pinky will be up top on the 5th fret of our A string. Now we're still going to have melodic movement in here on the same exact beat on the end of 2, but we're going to have to reach up with our pinky all the way to the seventh fret here, which can be a pretty big reach, especially if you're playing this on a tenor uke. Um, it is entirely possible, but it can be a little bit tough to reach that on a larger instrument. And we're going to utilize the split stroke just as we did before and have two identical bars with that movement. So the G seventh section will sound like this. And now we have a C7 chord that's going to be a little funky. We're going to play our G and C strings open. And what I want you to do is play your second finger on the sixth 
fret, that's a B flat on your E string, your ring finger is going to play the seventh fret of your A string like this, but we're going to place the first finger on the fifth fret of our A string because we're going to need that in just a moment. So this bar is all quarter notes, but we're moving around. So we're gonna play open, open, six, seven, and then for our second beat, we're gonna reach up with our pinky to our 10th fret, and then right back down to the seventh fret, and then just lift up that finger, and our first finger is already there for the fifth fret. So our bar here of C7 is gonna sound like this. And then we're gonna go down to just plain old C for two bars, and then we're going to play a C7 that you might not be familiar with. We're gonna voice our C major chord, open, 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 three, but we're going to bring a finger around and play the B flat on the third fret of our uh, G string here. And what this does is it still gives us the C up top in the melody, but creates a C7 chord as opposed to moving our top note down and changing the melody. So C7 bars are gonna sound like this. Let's try that one together. One, two, three, four. All right, now let's try this entire section of the song together. One, two, three, Let's move on to the final section of this tune, section D, where we'll be using our pluck strum technique that we learned earlier. Now the first four bars of this are rhythmically and right hand wise going to be absolutely identical. We're just going to use that pluck strum with a pluck on every downbeat and then a strum on the off beats for each and every chord that we use here. We're back to essentially the chords that were used in the A section and B section of the tune. So we're going to be starting off on an F major chord. And just as we did in the beginning section, we're going to put our melody note down, our C on the third fret of our A string on beat two, and then lift it up. After this, we'll be moving on to our A seventh chord and doing the exact same thing, except we're going to put our finger on the fourth fret on that C sharp instead on beat two. So we're just going to use our standard pluck strum technique that we've already learned and these first two bars are going to sound like this, nice and slowly. Now let's try that one together. One, two, three. Now we're gonna move on to our D seventh chord, much as we did in the other exercises here. And again, we're going to be putting down our extra note on beats two and four, much as we did previously. So we're going to voice our D seventh chord, and on two and four, we're gonna put down our pinky on the fifth fret. Rhythmically and playing wise, this is identical to everything we just did. It's gonna sound like this. Let's try that together. One. Two, three, four. And then we're gonna move on up to our G seventh chord. Now this is our bar chord voicing with the open G string that we used previously. And this section is actually identical to what we did before. We're gonna start off with our finger on the F on the eighth fret of our A string. And we're gonna go back and forth between that and our fifth fret where we are barred with two down strums, a down and up, and then another down strums. So the G seventh bar will be like this. 
And then we're going to our barred C7, much as we did before. Three, four, three, three. We're gonna do that for the first two beats of the measure, and then the second two, we're going to put down our ring finger or pinky finger on the D on the fifth fret of our A string. So the G7 to C7 bars will sound like this. It probably sounds familiar to you because it's exactly what we did earlier. Let's try that little section together. One, two, three, four. Now we're going to end this by going up to a split stroke on our bar chord F on the fifth fret. We're gonna have our pinky or third finger up here on the eighth fret as we do our split stroke. And what we're going to do is on beat two, the end of two actually, we're going to move this down to the seventh fret, much as we did earlier. And then on beat four, we're just gonna lift it up and play an F sixth chord. So we'll have that uh, just barred all the way across the fifth fret. So with our split stroke thrown in, it will sound a little bit something like this. Let's try that together. One, two, three, four. And then to end out this tune, we're going to go to our C7 bar chord. And we're going to play that once, and then we're going to add a C sharp, making this a C sharp fully diminished seventh chord on the fourth fret of our A string, just like that. And then we'll end on the F6 that we just played, which is barring all the way across the fifth fret. So that last bar will sound like this. So let's try it from the F chord. I'll play it first, and then we'll do it together. One, two, three. Together now. One, two, three, four. Now let's play all of section D or the pluck strum section together. We'll do this nice and slowly. One, two, three, four. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed learning this tune. And if you did go through the course, then a big congrats because you have opened up a whole new world of rhythmic possibilities. So I do want to remind you that if you do want to get the tabs to print off and keep for your records, you can click this link right here or go to the site rockclass101.com, do a search for five foot two eyes of blue. And also on that page was that really cool interactive tab player. So that tab player where you can watch it scroll across in real time, you can highlight bars, you can loop sections, all that fun jazz. And if you haven't checked out the course, then again, I'd highly encourage you to check it out. It's a modular course that you can work at your own pace and really comprehend and tackle all these rhythms, really get them ingrained into your playing repertoire. So I'll drop a link for the course in the description box as well. And up here. So guys, again, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and we look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care.